What's going on YouTube? Jason here with a delayed quick reaction video. I sent uh, I sent Arctic Watch Review a, some fan mail. I thanked him for, for his contributions to the YouTube Watch community. I asked him for his uh, picks of uh, three must-have uh, watches in a collection that is under uh, the 1K mark. His response was that you should uh, look at the uh, Seiko SKX, the Captain Willard, uh, the Longines, as well as uh, the uh, Rado, the Rado Retro Divers, and on to the the beef of the uh, video. He was uh, asking for his opinion on what I could add to the five watches. In fact, six watches if uh, we were to include the Chrono Toki that I am still waiting for uh, delivery. So it was a bit it was a bit painful to hear so painful till I heard it about 7 to 8 times playing it on loop he said that you know you should actually consider uh, selling all, all of the uh, watches there except for the Longines and the uh, Grand Seiko SBGA 201 uh, I let you. Uh, I leave you to watch the video for his uh, full explanation. So I so did ask him. Uh, I am. I was uh, considering adding three more, perhaps three more watches, since I can try to create manufacture, manufacture the reasons to buy them. So uh, my current thinking, maybe we should. Uh, I should be looking at uh, a Rolex, uh, did just in fact. Uh, Omega Group Master and maybe a Grand Seiko Hybrid to complete the uh, Grand Seiko uh, Trinity of a Spring Drive, a Quartz and a Hybrid Movement. So his thoughts were that maybe I should go for the uh, Datejust, uh, that I should go for the Datejust. I think he is really a, uh, let's straight away go to buy, uh, for anyone who's into watch collecting, you should go ahead and buy a Rolex first. Just watch his uh, five phases of watch collecting video. Uh, once you buy the Rolex, from then on you can see where exactly your preference lies. Uh, he said to look at the Datejust 41 because uh, it is not as uh, big as its name suggests and based on the wrist shot of the uh, Grand, Seiko, uh, Grand Seiko on my wrist, he felt that uh, you know he, perhaps there was some compatibility regarding the Globemaster. Uh, if you've got the date, just maybe you shouldn't go for the Globemaster unless unless you have got a great discount, forty cents to a dollar. I wonder where do they get these numbers from? Uh, instead of the Globemaster, go for one of the uh, Omega uh, divers. And regarding the Grand Seiko, his uh, thoughts were that, you know, it's not good value for money because it's a relatively new, I think he said it was a relatively new movement. So when the movement has been in circulation for a while and there are newer models that are better executed, particularly the uh, bracelet and the rehot. Interesting thing about Grand Seiko is that I have uh, several several prominent YouTubers, they have all commented on the uh, bracelet. I have not had any experience with the uh, Rolexes or AP or the Alain uh bracelet. I don't think Alain Anson has got a spot swatch, by the way, sorry, I stand corrected. But uh, they seem to say that uh, the Grand Seiko, for its price, uh, they definitely could do better. As well as the Rehot. So for if you're not familiar with uh, the term Rehot, the Rehot is a bit like, it is the, uh, inner, the inner etchings of the case. So for Rolex, you actually can see the serial number and the word Rolex inside. So there are some thoughts. I leave you to watch his video if you have got uh, any com oh. Just to just to uh, give a quick update, there hasn't really been much watch content exactly because I've been trying to uh, clear the the backlog of watches in my collection. So I think that's the last uh, abrupt 
update I've got here. So anyway, uh, enjoy the rest of your morning. Uh, we'll see you in the uh, next video. Uh, cheers.